All right, hi you guys, welcome. Now we'll be talking about linear and angular velocity. Now angular velocity, and once again, theta needs to be in radians. You can't have degrees here because otherwise if you have degrees, you're gonna mess up the numbers big time. So theta needs to be in radians. So angular velocity, this should actually be lowercase omega. It's like a, a curly bottom W and stuff, but it's going to be omega equals theta divided by t, which is time, so it would be your radians divided by your time, so that gives you the angular velocity. Now what does that mean? So that means if I have an object going swinging from here to here, it's going to tell me the velocity along this path what that velocity is going to be. Okay, now if I wanted linear velocity of a body in angular motion, I would just take the radius, which this would be radius, and obviously this would be omega, okay, and I would times the two. And if you wanted a formula with all of the letters written out, it would be radius times theta divided by t, and it doesn't matter well, it does matter that you multiply in that order and stuff, okay? All right, now, the amazing thing you're going to need to know is you're going to need to know your dimension analysis. So if you see one revolution, you're going to need to know that equals uh, 2 pi radians, okay? That's hugely important. So therefore, if I have 2,000 or 200 revolutions... That's going to be 200 times 2 pi. Okay? All right? So that's that's the measurement I'm going to have to actually measure. And just remember, circumference, one circumference, one revolution, they're all going to be pretty much the same thing. And just, just take care to just pay attention to what's going on in the problem to get it right and correct. Okay? All right, that's it for linear and angular velocity. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye.